Mental illness can, and it does happen to anybody. My name is Kathleen. I cared for my husband who had schizophrenia. I now care for my daughter who also has schizophrenia. This is my experience. Fellowship has helped me in a lot of ways. I've received a lot of education as a result of being a volunteer and occasionally I'm up here doing speeches for the Remind Mental Health Education and Training Program. My husband first showed signs of schizophrenia 10 years before he was diagnosed. He'd lost his mother and started behaving a little bit differently. Initially, I thought it was because of the grief, but then as time went on, I realised some of his behaviour was quite strange. Out of the blue one evening, I had put pork schnitzel in front of my husband and he started going through it with a fork, thinking that all the white specks in the breadcrumbs were actually poison and I just couldn't understand what was actually going on. It was very difficult for myself and both my daughters. The lack of understanding had a lot to do with it. And there were a lot of days you'd get up in the morning and you didn't know what to expect. You'd be walking around on eggshells wondering what was going to happen, if anything was going to happen. I did encourage him to go to our GP. He came home and I could tell that he hadn't been honest with the GP. Two or three days later he went to a local medical centre and voluntarily admitted himself. He only stayed there one night and came home the next morning. I was at the end of my tether by then. Fortunately, the mental health crisis team did come to the house and try and convince him to go back to hospital. He wouldn't do that. He was convinced that there was nothing wrong. After that, he actually, through our GP, did get in to see a psychiatrist reasonably quickly. Even though the mental health team had come to the house, they would not tell us a lot about what was going on. And it would have helped tremendously if someone had explained a lot more in detail as to what was actually happening to him. I tried to cope as best I could by keeping busy with the girls, being involved with them, I did start reading quite a lot about schizophrenia, which did help me understand part of what he was going through. I did go for counselling, and that particular counsellor did help me a lot because she made me realise that I had to think of myself as well as caring for two people with mental illness. My daughter's teenage years were difficult because she had been suffering from anxiety, from irrational thoughts, from depression. She'd been under a psychiatrist and even though she'd been having suicidal thoughts, he would not put her on medication. He wouldn't give a definite diagnosis as to what was happening with her at that time and that was all very frustrating. It was a long time before I was learned anything about support groups. Unfortunately, it was only four years ago that I did find out that they existed. And since then, it has helped me a lot. You realise that you are amongst other people with the same problems. You get education to help you deal with different situations. You're also taught 
amongst everything else to look after yourself. I've discovered that even though you go through such a tough time, things can and do get better. I've found that I've become a lot more resilient. Even though you have your bad days, you do bounce back. A carer's role needs to be respected and acknowledged because we need ongoing support and encouragement to keep on doing what we're actually doing.